The financial crash of 2008 precipitated a career change for Huda Katan. After being let go from a finance job, she pursued a career in makeup, heading to Los Angeles to train at the makeup school of legendary makeup artist Joe Blasco. Working for some of the most famous names in beauty, she developed a particular look, which she shared through a newsletter, which then became a blog supported by Facebook. It was all aided by her sister, Alia. It's just the two of us in the beginning. Um, I was helping her. She would do the posts and I would comment on her blog posts because that's what we had to do in the beginning, you know, because we weren't big. And also then we would post the blog posts on Facebook and I would find like um, some viral content, like some funny videos and quotes. The blog posts and viral content helped develop the following, but it was the products that have made the business. Those false eyelashes began selling through makeup store Sephora in Dubai in 2011. It's been the uptake in retail outlets around the world that has been key to the business's growth. Our wholesale retail business is still the big chunk of our business globally. I mean, everyone thinks it's 2020, so everyone thinks digital and e-com, but most people go into a store to buy makeup. You know, they want to touch it, they want to play with it, they want to feel it. Uh, so it, it's a big part of our business. Huda Beauty sells in more than 2,300 stores, Sephora being their anchor retailer globally, but now being sold in 80 boot stores in the UK, opening up new territories for the brand. The brand has also used a pop-up concept in London to raise profile on the high street and in malls. Visibility online and offline may be important, but with more than 140 items in the range, focus on product is key too. Where we stand out, amongst a lot of other brands is just our innovation. Huda is such a perfectionist, you know, that she pushes our, our suppliers to the absolute max. One of her key sayings here is Kaizen, continuous improvement. If you can get that 1%, let's get it. So I think just making, you know, amazing products that people haven't seen at, you know, the best possible prices. And you put that together with, you know, the social media aspect of it, and it's huge. And helping make it huge has been the arrival of Instagram. Huda Beauty has more than 40 million followers, and that number is growing rapidly. Uh, once Instagram became really big, she was posting, and then um, I was helping her, and then it just grew so fast. We are where we are today is because of our Instagram page. Huda Katam, welcome to Marketing Media Money. Thank you. You started with your own little, I think it was eyelashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you went to a retailer with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it went <laughs> big. Yeah. Why was that the right route when you could have gone straight to consumer given yeah. your following? A lot of people asked me that because at the time it was a trend just to go direct to consumer. Everybody was like, you have the followers, you can control, you know, where people shop, you can control where people go and it's it's in your, in your court. Um, I had a very specific thing in my mind. I knew that I wanted to scale and I wanted to scale very quickly. Um, and for that reason, I chose to partner with Sephora. And to some extent, it was an advantage for me as well because no influencers were thinking to do that. So there was some limits within that for, um, for other influencers. So I had a little bit of an advantage um, compared to the brands and compared to other influencers and where they were selling. You said that if it all got boring, Mm -hmm. you could leave it all behind. Yeah. And there would be people that would happily take this business off you <laughs> and you would become part of another business. But it yeah. sounds like that's not what you want. You want to be the big fish, not the little fish. You're right. I do want to be the big fish and the little fish, not the little fish. Um, just because I don't like the way beauty has been in the past. I think a lot of my issues, my own insecurities, are from the way people have been marketing to people. And um, we're a smaller brand. We can risk a lot of those things. So we can say, hey, we tried to be real and it completely flopped, but it was good for us. Like, we feel better now. Yeah. You know, publicly traded companies don't have that luxury. And, uh, and so, you know, it's their Achilles heel for better or for worse. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I can't imagine ever wanting to become a part of a conglomerate, but you never know. I also said I never do makeup. <laughs> you never know. Hi, I'm James Wright and thanks for watching Marketing Media Money. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thanks for watching.